Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at Gotta Play It All. If you enjoy it or learn something from the video, consider liking it and consider subscribing for more tips, tricks, tactics, gameplay videos, and all sorts of other things related to indie games and gaming in general. Lastly, don't forget our motto, play your way. So uh, today I'm quickly going to show you how to grab install and use uh, Jones soft generic mod enabler JS Jimmy for silent hunter 4 so first we need to find and download it so in Google just type in JS Jimmy 2.6 download you want 2.6 that's the last version that was released they're no longer updating it it's available on um, it's available on subsim dot com under their download section if you click on uh, this link here however you do need to register to download otherwise it's available at uh, a ton of other websites just make sure you get the uh, the 2.6 version and so once you've once you've downloaded it you will get a 7-zip archive so make sure you have WinRAR 7-zip open up the JS GME folder now open up your Silent Hunter 4 folder and simply take everything and drag and drop it right into that folder. So you'll have a new folder called mods as well as jsgme.exe.ini and the help and dot text. You can delete these two if you, whoops, you can delete these two if you if you like, they're not essential. Anyways, now in your mods folder, all you have to do is find a mod that you downloaded. So let me just grab one quick. All right, so we have Webster's free camera and scope fix for version 1.4 and 1.5. So I'm gonna open it up and I have version 1.5, so I'm gonna use this one. Now it has the data folder within it, so that means I need to go back a directory and drag this folder into the mods folder. You always want the next directory up to have the data folder or whatever other folders in it. That's the only way it'll work. If you put your data folders in here, it won't work. Or if you go in here and then there's another folder called Webster's Free Camera and then data, it won't work. Data needs to be the second folder in. And I'll take another one, say Trigger Maru Overhaul. Double click on it, okay. Data and documentation are within it, so I'm just gonna drag the entire folder in there. Obviously that's a much larger mod, so it would take a lot longer. But anyways, then when you're ready to enable your mods, I'll just let this finish. All right, so we're ready to go. Alrighty, so under our mods folder, we have two mods. So Trigger Maru Overhaul, which has data in it. And we have Webster's Free Camera and Scope Fix for version 1.5, which has data within it. So now we go back, we open up jsgme.exe. Preferably run it as an administrator, but usually it doesn't matter too much. And then your available mods are simply here. So I can enable the free camera and scope fix by selecting it and then hitting enable selected mod. And I can do it with the other one. Now you'll see cameras has already been altered by Webster's free camera and scope fix. So what this means is that Trigger Maru overhaul is going to overwrite um, the camera dot, cameras dot dat f uh, file that was modified by Webster's free camera and scope fix mod. So that means that you'll no longer have the functionality of whatever was changed in this file from Webster's uh, free camera fix. So if you enable this mod, you'll still have them both, but the previous one may not function due to that file being overwritten. So the order in which your mods are enabled, or as they're called the mod soup, is very important. Now, if you wish to have something like Trigger Maru Overhaul uh, installed, as well as Webster's Free Cam and Scrope, 
free camera and scope fix. And then you would enable trigger Maru overhaul first, and then you would enable Webster's free camera and scope fix, and it would give you a similar error except for this time you'd be overwriting the free camera and scope fix cameras dot dot file over top of the trigger maru's camera uh dot dot file so yeah it depends on the order that you activated your mods in you'll see this is grayed out that means that it cannot be disabled because this one's overwritten files so it doesn't allow you to do that without first disabling this so that is the basics of it once they're activated and again when you do something like this uh it definitely does not guarantee compatibility unless the mods both say that they're compatible or one of the mods say that they're compatible with the other but once once you've got your your mods that you want enabled you're ready to go you just hit close you start up your game as usual and you are good to go and at all times uh, JSGME keeps a backup of all of all changed files so you don't have to ever worry about it having um, having effect uh, corrupting your game However, there is ways to have multiple installations of Silent Hunter 4. I'm going to make a video about that one day so you can have one that's modded with, say, um, one that's modded with um, TMO, one that's modded with something else that's a big overhaul, etc., etc., and then like one that's stock or something. Anyways, that is how you use GS. Uh, JSGME and any mods for Silent Hunter 4. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, please consider liking the video and consider subscribing for more gameplay videos, tips and tactics videos, tricks videos, and all sorts of other gaming videos, especially uh, gaming videos about indie games and indie game development. We will be on Twitter soon and Facebook soon as soon as we start to build up a following and enough videos. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests and call for help, so if there's a video you'd like to see or if you're having issues with a game or a mod, let us know and we will make a video for you. So anyways, see you next time and remember, play your way.